mute in case the chainsaw ridiculousness is coming. Welcome to another episode in this Quantum Human Summit series. We are pleased to be here today with you and sharing my next guest, who really will let us know how we expand our multidimensionality. She's also going to be talking to us about alchemy and what that is and the five alchemical bodies and the five planes of existence. Let's meet Julie Clare, who's a beautiful teacher who absolutely brings us into our hearts. Hi, Julie. Welcome back. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> the pleasure to be back. Let's have some fun. <laughs> we are going to have some fun. We're a yes. few minutes late here, but that's okay. We are welcoming Mercury Retrograde. Mm -hmm. We are welcoming the revisiting of things in the past. And this is where alchemy comes in because we can transcend all the discord by being in the present moment. So Julie, as we start our um, program, I would love to hear your contribution to how we expand our multidimensional awareness. What is that all about? Great question. Well, uh, I've been on your show two times before. This is the third time. And each time I came, I presented one aspect of what I've developed. It's called the multidimensional harmonization method. So it's perfectly timed with, with this call. And the the first part is all about working with the three lower chakras, which are, you know, they're each dimensions and densities in themselves. Working with the three lower chakras to align the body-mind connection so that the mind's not on its own and the body disconnected and they're dissociated from each other. And then on the second call I came in, we talked about expanding the sacred heart space, which is the bridge, which is the, the, the bridge. It's the multidimensional bridge between these dimensions. And today what I want to talk about is alchemy and the third part of the method, which is awakening the soul dimension. So of course, doing it from a solid base where the mind and the body are back together with a calm, open heart, from there, then we can go into we can go into the deeper work, and that's where the alchemy comes in. And um, alchemy is is very ancient work. It's uh, it was around way before way before people were trying to transform metals into whatevers. Uh, alchemy, the word itself, alchemy with a K means fertile soil, and it's it's a term from ancient Egypt, and it referred to you know like the alchemy of the Nile and, and how fertile the soil can be. So the idea is to cultivate a very fertile soil within yourself so that you can wake up, so that you can rise up in your consciousness um, up into the, the higher realms of the, you know, the divine will, the divine love, and the divine mind, which are the three higher chakras. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way they used to go about that was these were, you know, these were mystery schools where you had to devote 20 years of your life easy to going into this kind of work. But now, now we live in a time where a lot of these things are a lot more accessible than they were before because the frequency has changed. That is such good news as well, because <laughs> I mean, um, it, it's, it's so par for the course for all of humanity. We have to do the inner work. We do have to do the inner work as part of our consciousness, right? It's not going to just come, or maybe it will come automatically. When enough of us get there, will that propel others as well? Or would you say we have to go through that alchemy? We have to we have to do that inner work. That's a super fun question. Um, I'm definitely on the side of the more of us wake up, the more it creates a fertile soil for others to wake up. 
Yeah. But I don't believe that anyone gets it for free. Okay. <laughs> There's no freebies. There's no freebies in the awakening process. <laughs> and so let's say the awakening process, will everyone awaken or will it? I know this gets into the bifurcation and, and some will just go to a different planet maybe. Yeah, that's that's one of the theories, right? Like one of the theories, but will it be a push come to shove? So those of us who are doing that work and, and putting our awareness on it, we're reaching for it because it feels so good. It feels so good to surrender to love. It feels so good to let love take over. Yeah. So if if it if it's there's no free lunch then maybe people are going to get it's what is it going to be harder for people to live and exist in this plane if they're not waking up so is that is that what we call a push comes to a shove type incident where people are going to be herded herded like cows into ascension if if and that's where all of us watching this show comes in because we can help herd those mm -hmm. Yeah, cause, like this is kind of like what what's really cool about this time that we live in is that, you know, awakening has been attained by individuals, you know, but it's very it's 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 rarer that an entire collective awakens, but it exists. You know, we have a lot we have examples of ascended civilizations, so it exists. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? At the end of the day, I think if someone doesn't feel the pull you know, of surrendering to love, which means literally obliterating your ego in many ways. If someone doesn't feel the pull to that and it's terrorizing, they're not going to do it. Right. Right. And, and that's okay. And it's that's okay. okay. Right. And then it's like, and then like, how far do you do the, down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Like, supposedly we're kind of like in a hologram and every single one of us is at the center of its own hologram. So it's like, it gets kind of tricky to talk about, you know, I think it's true that if someone's not ready for something, you know, my definition of love is as you wish and at your pace. So if a soul does not feel ready to ascend and kind of like take off the blinders completely, why would they not be offered to go somewhere else? Like, why would they not be offered that their hologram kind of stays the way it needs to be for them to continue their growth process? To me, it's not like we're going and they're not and, and they're losers and we're, we're not, like, it's not, it's not like that. Right. Like, it's just, it's just what is, it's just what is like, so, but the, the, the reality of the alchemy work is that on this planet, it's literally under 5% of human forms that have ever been able to really go up through the alchemical stages of awakening. It's very, very low. Very low. Okay, let's talk about the alchemical stages of ascension. Yeah. Um, that's a fascinating, intriguing topic. And we all want to We do. We want to know more. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the old alchemy traditions talk about the shiny black, shiny white, and shiny red phases of awakening. Okay. And then only once that's done, are you actually awake enough in the dream to remember what you came here to do as a soul? Like at a much, much vaster level than I came to heal this trauma or I came to work on this thing. It's more like, you know, like big, big work. Like I came to reconnect Gaia's heart to the Christ consciousness grid, like something huge like that. So that's after having gone through the shiny black, white and red phases. So the, the alchemy teaching in a nutshell is that the way we start our lives is we start with these phases, but they're not shiny. Mm -hmm. So boy, boys start with the red phase, women start with the white phase. And then as we get older, we go into the black phase. So the red phase is like kind of like masculine, aggressive energy, go out there and get shit done. And like that kind of like, you know, and white, the white phase is about teaching. And like you think about stereotypes of feminine and masculine energy, right? So you know, mothering, uh, taking care of a group, uh, taking care of a family, like, and then the black phase is when you start organizing the matter of your life, you know, like getting a house, getting your career down, getting that, you know, that kind of stuff down. So boys go through red, then eventually white, and girls go through white and eventually tap into red. 
And then, then the black phase. So the black phase is really organizing our lives. Like it's normally 30s, late, late 30s and beginning of 40s. We've kind of got it down. So the way alchemy used to work is that almost no one started the real alchemy work until they were in their 40s. Because then it was, then it was going from black to shiny black. Going into the shiny version. So, for example, and this is one of the main teachings of alchemy, it's like, if you don't wake up out of the black phase, you're basically a biological robot. Oh, yeah. You're walking around and you're like, I have to have this career and I have to do this for 35 years. And after that, I'll be able to retire. And I have a house and a picket fence and a dog and a this and a that. And there's none of the questions that are much deeper, like, why am I here? What is this? You know, is there a goal or purpose to this existence other than me having a house and a family and a dog and a car? You know, so that's the beginning of shiny black. So everyone coming on a call like this has already has already started their shiny black. The, the second you start asking questions of like, what is the deeper meaning of my life? It's like that organizational energy starts waking up and shiny black phase is all about kind of healing all the cultural conditionings, the social programmings, all the stuff we carry in our bodies that keep us as biological robots, right? And then that phase can last a long time. That's what I was telling you. Less than 5% of, of humans have ever completed the shiny black phase. When you're completed the shiny black phase, there's nothing left in you other than I'm here. What am I going to do? I don't have that culture thing. I don't have that family heritage. I don't have that epigenetics. There's none of that affecting you anymore. Right. So the idea is that once you go into shiny black and you've kind of cleared all the chakras and the subtle bodies and you got a nice clean aura, things can just go right through. There's no more triggers, no more, you know, things like programmings that, that catch you and snag you. Then you go into the shiny white phase. And the shiny white phase is all about teaching. Teaching and sharing the light, bringing it to as many people as you can. It's the phase where, you know, you open a school and you have students or, you know, maybe not a school, but you know what I mean? Like you, you have entered that place where you're connected enough to your light and your light has enough room in you that you're just, you want to expand it, extend it and help others receive the teachings of the light as well. So that's a phase that a lot of light workers are in. Right. Like they they have their little academies and they're this and they're that. And they're they're helping people learn how to do energy work and how to connect to the light and na, 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 na. And then the shiny red phase. So the shiny red phase is when you tap into spiritual power in a way that there's no more need for mantras, for symbols, for rituals, for recognition of any kind. Like that's it. You, you've gotten to the place where you could write the most amazing book, systematizing an entire system of whatever. And have zero desire for your name to even be on it. Mm. You know, like you know what I mean? Like you're you're okay with teaching, but you don't you don't need anyone to know you. You don't need to publicize yourself. You're not interested. It's like those who need me will find me. Period. Mm. You know. Like, and the alchemist that trained me, that was one of his core teachings. He's like, Julie, don't 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 go get ads and whatever. Just make yourself make sure they can find you. Make sure they can find you, and that's it. Let them let them come find you. Just make sure that it's possible to find you. And that's it. No more. No more. Don't push more. Wow. And uh, each of these shiny phases has a challenge. Okay, a main challenge that you go, yeah, mm, test, <laughs> final exam <laughs> mm -hmm. before, you can, before you can move on to the next one. So, for example, um, in the shiny, between the shiny white and the shiny red phase, which is a really hard transition. And now we're talking less than 1% of the population have touched that, like, is your guides might give you information that's actually not accurate so that you go and do something and then realize, hey, you guys lied to me. And that's a huge, huge transition of like, don't listen to the teacher without any you know of your own critical skills to come in and go hmm okay thank you for the information what am i going to do with that because you can't go into shiny red if it's still possible for people to tell you what to do and you listen it's as if you're putting you're overriding your own internal voice your own wisdom within we know what we know within 
So it's all, and, and I, I just want to share, there is a point where people come ask questions on this show and they say, my guides have left me or they feel like they haven't got a connection with their guides and that concerns them. But what we've learned is that they're actually being given the space to be their own teacher in the moment. Do you agree with that? Is that, is that what's going on? Well, it can be that going on, and it can also be that the guides have been hijacked. You know, like so, it could be both. It could be both because, like, that's that's another fun thing about the alchemy work right. is that as you go into the soul landscape and start doing work there, there's a lot of places where you go where you meet guides, and one of the first things you do is you test. You test to make sure that they're actual real guides. Okay. You test to make sure. Like sometimes they're just out of date, you know, like, but other times they're masquerading as that and they're not. Uh, so, see. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this different things going on. Like uh, there's someone else that you have on your show sometimes that she talks about that, you know, this, this, this universe that we're in, it's, it's a little bit infected with, you know, shadowy stuff. Right. So, which is part of it, which makes it extra cool to work from shiny white to shiny red face here because there's a, it's a bunch of poker faces going on, right? Where you're, you're like, so are you really, are you really a guide? And even if it is a guide, uh, one of the best teachings I ever received from the master alchemist that trained me is like, your guides are guides. They're not there to make decisions for you. They give you advice. At the end of the day, you know, they're counselors. You decide at the end of the day. Yes. And that's, and and that's like that. That really is like that. That that's how you know when you found shiny red. And the the shiny red challenge is related to pushing your students too far before they're ready. So it's like it's like these. It's very it's it's very very interesting. So you were asking me a question. I forgot to say. So the the shiny black body corresponds to the alchemical body. It's like a it's like a black shiny black body. It's what happens when all the subtle bodies and all the chakras, it's like all that stuff's cleared out. So your aura is like your seven main, you know, there's more than seven, but that whole thing is like nice and pristine. And then the shine, and that corresponds to the physical plane. And then the shiny white body is the alchemical soul. And that's going into fields that are a little bit wider, a little bit bigger than the ones that we're accustomed to working with. And that's corresponds to the plane, the cosmic plane. And then the shiny red body corresponds to the spiritual plane. And then we're getting into chakras that are not that known by most people because a lot of us don't get there. Like if you if you're around someone in a shiny red phase, you know it's almost it's uncomfortable being around them. You you feel the frequency, whatever your patterns are, they're getting like moved around just by being around someone like that. It's 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 good if you want that. You know, like if you're if you're like, yes, I want to wake up. But if, if you don't, it's, it's, you know, that's why there's not a lot of people around people in shiny red and shiny red people don't want a bunch of people around them. They're not doing the shiny white teaching thing anymore. They're happy to have a couple of students that are willing to go really, really deep. And that's it. And then the two other alchemical bodies are the golden body. And the teal body. And, you know, alchemy talks about the philosopher's stone, for example. So with a shiny black, white, red body now reintegrated together, that's the first level of the, of the philosopher's stone work. And then the second level is when you actually go beyond that. That's when you've woken up enough that you can start connecting to what your soul actually came here to do as a purpose, like as a big purpose. And that's the golden phase, which is the plane of creation. This is where creation with a capital C kind of thing. Like, like, what are we coming here to do? Like, oh, I came to, you know, bridge back uh, Gaia with uh, Andromeda or something like that. Like big work that has nothing to do with humans, <laughs> basically, you know? And then the last plane is the plane of the absolute, the teal phase. And that's just, you're just, you're just back. You're back at being one, one with God, you know? There's not much I can say about that other than that. It's just, it's it's kind of self-explanatory. You're done. You're done. You know, I actually know, I know a couple of people, and it's a very small crowd, 
but I know a couple of people in these different phases. And I would say mm -hmm. many, okay, isn't it interesting that the shiny black is where, okay, we wake up from the black, the dim black or, or whatever it is. Okay. What, what did you call it? Just the dim black? Dull, dull. Dull, dull black. Dull black is like, I find it fascinating that around that age of late 30s to 40s, that people start to wake up. And even uh, on a physical level, um, I remember reading this book that talked about that too, as this, something physically happens in the body that mm. we're genetically designed to wake up, like mm -hmm. the reach for something more. And so I'd say that those who are watching this show, most of us are shiny white then, we get it. I do know some who are the shiny red, I do. I do know some that just, they, they, they no longer are triggered and they are, mm, they don't care about the ego. It's wonderful to see it. It really is. And then they'll step back from programs like this. They, they will, they'll step back and they'll just be like, people can find me. You know, I do know a couple of, a couple of people come to mind right now, but then the golden, oh my gosh, I did just meet someone recently that was golden. And that was very hard to be in that energy because it was a very big task. Mm. It was almost like, this beautiful soul had challenges being in the rest of our energy, in of our heart, energy, right? So it explains it exactly. It really does explain it. Now, the absolute phase, oh my gosh, I'm thinking of Yogananda and, and, and some of yes. this, or the oneness, or, or a very dear, dear soul mama who feels the oneness all the time. So I love that. So... Mm. Wow. Yeah, like if we, if we were looking at it with the Hawkins scale, like at like the plane of the absolute, the person is probably just calibrating at a thousand by then. Wow. Yeah, they're just the right, like because even in that uh, eight fifty to a thousand, that's like real enlightenment. There's still that place between seven hundred and eight fifty where you can connect to the void, and you think that's that's it. The void is you know the the truth, but the void is full of light, right? Like so, so there's. You can absolutely feel when you're around someone like that. The the shiny black is, you know, something else that's kind of dynamic, you know, like it's not like you have to complete all the shiny black and then you can start the shiny white. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's not exactly like that. Like we kind of fluctuate and sometimes Yeah, ahead. like it's you know, we're not ro we're not robots, right? Like <laughs> we can we can like shift in between these and it's yeah. all our in our focus. Yeah. Like, for example, some of my advanced students, like, we're, we're at a point where, like, if we muscle test to see where they're at, like, they're kind of like, they're at about 72% shiny black completed, uh, 40, 45, 46 shiny white, and 7 to 8% shiny red. Okay. And then we, we kind of test once in a while to see, and sometimes it's got a little boost, and, and then it kind of stabilizes, because it's, some aspects of shiny red are a little bit freaky, because you're like, uh, am I still going to care about my kids? You know, like, and then like, that kind of, whoa, whoa, not too fast. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get like, so fast that I no longer even understand what it means to be a human being. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or I, I, it's funny, but it's not like, it's just. <laughs> or, or we're not ready for our relationships to shift and change because you would think that going through. They will. That pro they will. They will. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh. You're explaining so much. I want to show the Zoom audience who in our Zoom audience resonates with where what Julie is talking about and where you might be. That would be beautiful. So you said you do muscle testing for that. What about yourself, Julie? Have you thought on your own alchemical journey where you're at? Where I'm at? Um, yeah, like, I, first of all, it's not like... I've completed all the phases. It's not like that. You know, like we, we don't. Yes. First of all, first of all, like this is the beauty. Like when not you're in right. shiny red, when you're in shiny red, you don't give a shit. You don't give a shit about where you're at and what your percentage is. And, you know, my students that still want to know that information, it's kind of coming from a, you know, like a, it's kind of, it's coming from the transcendental ego side, right? Like, like what are, what, what's my score, you know? Right. And, and it's not a race. This is no, not it's a not. Not, you're not going to be graded on it. Mm -hmm. No, and something I can tell you about the the alchemy work is like there's a, the, a feminine and a masculine side to it. Okay, so the masculine side is working on these bodies, 
it's like it's working on these bodies, working on, you know, certain ways to uh, help activate the whole uh, network of chakras and energy lines that connect the subtle bodies of each of the things. You know, there's like these rituals you can do. You put yourself in a symbolic structure and you work with flames. And that's the whole masculine side through which you work on bodies. But the feminine side is all about journeys. And the feminine side, for me, is my favorite part of it because what you do is you learn to travel within the fourth and fifth layer of your aura. Wow. You learn to travel within the astral plane and all the way up to the celestial plane, which is the third eye. And that's where, for me, the most incredible work happens. Because when you die, your you know etheric, emotional, and mental bodies collapse and disintegrate. They don't come with you. But everything fourth layer up does. It does. It exists after your physical body dies. And all the alchemical journeys, all the soul alchemy journeys, that's where we're doing them. And we're waking things up and we're reintegrating skills or talents or objects or that we've kind of pushed aside. It's like, oh, I got killed because of that. Let me just leave it in my aura. And it's just kind of floating there. So in the journeys, we bring all that back together. It's also where you have all the past life stuff. It's where you have entities and implants and portals. This is where you get to actually go find all that and clear it out. And the more you clear it out, the more these outer fields become conscious in a way that when you die, you keep it. Like you're going into your next incarnation with that resolved. It's done, right? You've done it in this physical body by going into the the, the alchemy work. And, and it's like the, how to say that, the, you know, the, the results follow you throughout your lives. So whatever, whatever you're resolving now from a past life, it affects that past life, but it also affects all your future lives, right? So, and that, that's where the stuff gets amazing because there's like temples and castles and pyramids and there's all these places. I'm a story girl. You know, I love unfolding into the story of my soul and all these stories. And the feminine side of, of, of alchemy is where you actually get to do that and meet the guides and assess who's there, who should who you don't need anymore if you're ready for something better. And as you do the, the masculine work and the, the alchemical bodies get stronger, you do need new guides. Yeah. Right. Cause you're getting closer and closer to going beyond just the human purpose of your existence. Like I'm going to come work on this core trauma and that family line. Okay, great. You know, once that's done, then it's like, okay, now it's new stuff. And I need, I need new, I need new guides for this. And that, that's where we get to go play with that and like, and I don't know, just receive levels of teaching that are hard to explain, like in a, you know, in a one hour talk, but there's even a place where your energetic eyes, you know, and people have, they can have many pairs of eyes, which represent deep psychic skills. And some of them, you know, the eyes are empty. They're, they're kind of dormant and they need to be w woken up. And, uh, I, I, there's just so many places. I, I I love this work so much. I've been doing this for 30 years. I have never got bored. Well, thank you for that because that is what reveals your shiny whiteness, <laughs> mission, right? Um, where you're working, you know what your mission is, and you're on it. And and so, all right. Well, this is so fascinating, and we we want more. We want an experience. <laughs> Really, it would be wonderful if you could lead oh. us a soul alchemy journey um, because we want to know how we would go and explore our aura, how we would explore the portals that you talked about. The mm -hmm. work, that's the deep inner work. Yeah, yeah. Will, will this help us do that? Or is that a yeah, special? So, no, no. So, okay. So first of all, like going into the landscape, on your own without someone that kind of like knows what's going on. It's a symbolic structure, right? So anything can show up any way it wants to, but connecting with the soul dimension with like, it's like a, it's a, a platform that has a tree and a river. And from there you start going places. So connecting to the tree and the river is you literally coming back to connecting with your soul. It's just a visual platform to connect with your soul that I would want everyone to do that every day. Because okay. it feels amazing. And we will do that. you know. But in terms of leaving that space and going to explore other areas, it's good to have the tools. 
mm-hmm. right? Because these are energy words. So you have energy tools to work here to to assess what things are if they're showing themselves in their real light, you know, like so it's it's a lot with colors, you know, golden orange, crystal white, violet, dark blue, like you each of the colors has a frequency and an, an intelligence, they're sentient. And, you know, you work with them to assess what you're actually dealing with. And some of the things aren't you, but you can still help them heal before you take them out of your field, right? And some of these things are you, but they might not look like you at the beginning. They might look like a big monster or a dragon or something, but it doesn't mean that that's what it is. So... And, and, and so it's it's from our past. It's from our past lives. Absolutely. But anything fourth, fifth, sixth level of your aura, this is all the stuff you've been, this is you, this is your soul, right? Like it's your alchemical soul level. It's the, the, the level that, um, it's the cosmic plane. So you're carrying things from not only human incarnations. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the mm-hmm. other cool thing about this. Like the more you expand into your soul landscape and the more you work on your shiny bodies the more you start tapping into your your karma your karmic assets and your gifts and your knowledge and wisdom and traumas and pains from way beyond before earth even existed wow so it's, it really is coming back to the much bigger you this is incredible work uh, we can't wait to get started. No, seriously, this right. is incredible work. I know that we're ready for that. Um, it's no, just- we are. We are ready for that. And that's, yeah, that's something else. Like I just, before we go into the meditation um, is, you know, there's three super important teachings that have been offered to human beings. And, you know, they they have their representatives, right? So the alchemy tradition was represented by Hermes the whole hermetic tradition. And what alchemy is, is a process to align with divine will. Okay. And like your divine will is what you truly are. And whatever you're not gets pulverized by you aligning with divine will. So, you know, like even like, you know, with the metals and they're trying to like transform vile metals into gold. It's the same idea. It's like bringing it back to the ultimate alignment with divine will. So that's one tradition. And then we've got the whole detachment and compassion tradition of Buddha. And we've got the whole love and forgiveness tradition of, of represented by Jesus and Christ consciousness. So these are the three most important teachings that have been downloaded in, in humanity to help it wake up, you know? So the alchemy stuff is about align with the divine will, aligning with the divine will. So I will bring us into the landscape for an experience of what it feels like to align with your divine will. (laughs) Thank you. And uh, I guess we'll look at questions or after. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. Oh, so since this is all about making sure that we're working with you know, seven chakras that are all nicely open and aligned. I always start by a process through which we come back into the body and make sure that all the energy centers and all the subtle bodies are activated properly. I've done this before on this show, the Triple Heart Connection. It's such a simple process. This line of energy that flows through you, it comes all the way down from the heart of God, goes into your crown, goes through the central line, into the heart, which is the bridge, out of the root chakra, all the way to the heart of Gaia. So that triple heart connection is the heart of God, the heart of your soul, and the heart of Gaia. And just feeling that, taking the time to feel that. You you truly are the bridge between the celestial and the terrestrial. That line of light is always there, but by concentrating on it, you amplify it. So feel your heart as the center, as the bridge between God and Gaia. (laughs) 
now. Let's start by a descending movement, just feeling that God energy flowing into you. It enters the crown and it goes down that line, down the head, down the throat, the thymus, the heart, plexus, sacral root, and down it goes. Because that's our job here. We are here to be bridges through which the light can be embodied and channeled into the earth. So feeling that light flowing down into you, all the way to the heart of the earth. And then you use inhales. You use your inhalation to inhale the earth energy up into the root. So you inhale, you fill it up, 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 fill it up. And you exhale, you flow the energy back out. So that energy is always pouring into you. It's always pouring into you. That divine energy, it never stops. It's like an endless stream. And what you do is you inhale. You are inhaling the earth energy, the Gaia energy, up, up the central line. Inhale one chakra up, coming into the sacral chakra, inhaling it up, inhaling, filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. And you exhale, you flow the energy out front and back. Front and back of the sacral. And up we go again. Inhaling up that central line, up into the plexus. Inhale, filling it up, filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. And exhale, flowing the energy out front and back. Oh, yeah. And let's keep coming on up. Inhaling up, 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 up the central line into the heart chakra now. Inhale, you're filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. Exhaling front and back, front and back of the heart. Little pit stop. We're going to stop at the thymus. Inhaling, bringing that earth, grounded, nurturing energy up into your sternum, up into your thymus. Such an important gland. And just oh, offering it this little gift and exhaling front and back. And coming on up, 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 up. Let's inhale that earth energy up all the way into the throat. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. And exhale front and back. One more time. Good. Now let's come into the head. So inhale into the center of your brain. I'm going to give you a little trick to actually find the true center of your brain where your pineal gland is, is you're going to inhale into the center of your brain. And when you exhale, you're going to exhale out of your crown and the bridge of your nose at the same time and notice where you actually feel your pineal gland. It's a little bit further back than we think. So inhale center of the brain, exhale out of the crown and the bridge of the nose and notice there. That's the real center of your brain. So that's where you inhale into. Next inhale, bring in that earth energy up into the center of your brain, right in the pineal gland. And exhaling in all directions, like the rays of a sun. Let's just feed all, everything in your skull cavity. Face, brain, the whole, everything. Inhale, center of the brain. Exhale like the rays of the sun. Okay, we're going to do a couple of pit stops at important chakras that are related to clairvoyance. So inhaling, center of the brain. And exhaling out of the base of the skull. The back of the head, base of the skull, right underneath that little ball. Yeah. Mm 
Okay. Inhaling center of the brain. Exhaling out of the back of the head. It's a little bit higher than the back of the head, but you, you get used to it. And you, the energy centers wake up enough and they let you know where they are. Inhale, center of the brain. Exhale, out of the crown. Inhale, center of the brain. Exhale, out of the top of the forehead, right where the hairline meets the forehead. And inhale, center of the brain. Exhale out of the bridge of the nose between the eyes. It's like we just we give straight food to the pituitary glands, which are related to your third eye. And start feeling your third eye. Just a little bit above your eyebrows. It gets activated from us exhaling through the bridge of the nose. So inhaling that earth energy all the way up to the center of the brain. Exhaling out of the bridge of the nose and start feeling your third eye. Bringing yourself into that space. And the way we enter the landscape is we will project ourselves from the third eye into the landscape. So simply imagine a tree in a river flowing beside it. There is no right way for this to look. Just imagine it, a tree and a river. And you inhale, center of the brain. And when you exhale, you exhale out of your third eye and you bring yourself in between the tree and the river. So you just fly right out of your third eye. You project yourself into the image with the tree and the river. And just take this time to land here. The first thing we will do is I want you to look at the river. So the, the tree is at your back. You are facing the river. You are looking at it. And you need to assess, is the current of the water going right to left or left to right? If it is going left to right, locate the much bigger tree on the other side of the river and just bring yourself there. Good. Oof. Ground's super active. A whole bunch of us doing it at the same time. It's awesome. Now, this tree represents, like it is a symbolic representation of what houses your soul. It is your higher self. It is the entire being that you are. So first things first, let's just connect. Observe it, its beauty. How big is it? How thick is its trunk? Does the bark look healthy? Does it have it all at all in leaves? And just touch it. Put your hands on it. Have that conscious contact. And I'm sure you already feel the pull to merge with it. Allow yourself to literally walk into the tree. Allow yourself to merge with your soul. Expand into the roots, into the branches, the heart of your higher self, of your soul, and of your human self, all aligning, all centered one into each other. And feel this, feel. It's like the sap running through the tree in your blood and everything as one.
And remember that triple heart connection? I'll come back to it from here. Inhaling the God energy from the crown into the heart. Inhaling the earth energy from Gaia through your root into your heart. Blending the energies there. And exhale, expanding, extending that energy. The tree is the center of the landscape. And from here, you inhale the celestial and terrestrial energies into your heart. And you exhale, you expand them, you send them out like rays, send them out, feel them go through the boundary of your skin, the boundary of your aura, the boundary of the tree. having this conscious connection with your soul. You know, maybe you talk with words with it, or maybe it's just feelings. But just know, this is what it feels like when you're in a soul hug. Your higher self is holding your soul, and your soul is holding you, and you are holding everything you've created. Ask for a message. Tree, do you have any advice for me? Is there anything you want to tell me right now? Feel that pulsation. All these hearts, one inside the other, all beating together. So this is a very yummy place and we could stay here for hours. But I want you to take the time right now to just unmerge with the tree so that you're back outside beside the tree looking at the river. And the river here is a symbolic representation of your vital energy, your life force, your chi. <clears throat> so this too, we, we observe, you know, how's the current? How deep is the river? How's the flow? And it's like changing all the time. Like, And I want you to go for a swim. I want you to go into this water. I want you to replenish your vital energy. Allowing that water to flow through you. To fill you up. To fill all every single spot between every single cell. Replenish. And feel it, really feel it in your physical body because this is how we bring it all the way down through the lower chakras. This is how we bring the healing all the way down into our human incarnation by feeling it feeling the frequency of the higher levels, bringing it down, bringing it down the densities. And of course, here too, you could want to hang out in here forever. This is just for you to get a taste. You can always come and merge with your tree. You can always come and swim in your river. And when you are ready to come back, it's a simple process. 
We just we leave the river, we come back between the tree and the river. It's always our starting point and our ending point. And from here, I want you to take a nice big inhale where you literally bring yourself out of the landscape and back into your third eye and your physical body. So a nice big inhale. It's like... And then you exhale, you bring your consciousness all the way back down into your feet. So just... Yeah, and feel the difference. Just from a little <laughs> a little dip into the landscape. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That was so enriching. Wow. You're just like, oh, okay, that's what it means to be home. Yes. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so many, so many experiences there. And we'd love to hear from our audience. It's at one point, you know, uh, where to start? Um, at one point, I just felt huge and I felt the oneness of all. So it was really very special. And Wow, loving it. Then as we practice this every day, every moment, every day when we wake up or whatever, this is our inner work. How do we identify things that need to change? Well, I guess it would come from our our soul. Um, it'd be wonderful to hear what people heard from their soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like often the first times you go into the landscape, it's kind of like, you know, everything's on track. You're doing fine. Everything's perfect. You know, like it's some of the first messages your soul will let you know. It's like, hey, don't don't stop freaking out. You know, <laughs> your mind doesn't know what's going on. Like, it's, it's like all good, you know, like and then the more you go and the more you take the time to ask questions, the guidance gets more and more specific. It gets really trippy. You know, it goes from like you are love to call that person at four, you know, like like. All the way, <laughs> it's like, it gets more, the more you show up, the more you show up and ask for the advice, the more you develop, you know, that, that muscle of being in contact with the tree and like for advanced students, like you're just, you're kind you're always, you're always there. You know what I mean? Like they don't, they don't leave the landscape anymore. One of my, one of my students is like, I now know for certain that the world in my landscape is more real than the world out there. Wow. <laughs> And it's not freaky. It's not it's not a bad trippy thing to be aware of that because it's a lot more amusing <laughs> to be noticing what's going on. And when I feel an energy is off, I can just go in my landscape and it's like, boom, it's right there. It's right there. You can interact with it right there. Like, hey, no, you can't be here. So it's like you, you're reclaiming your sovereignty by, you know, having a, a space to go in where you can actually work on the energies when they show up. Wow. <laughs> okay, this was really beautiful. And I do have to agree, the message that I got from my soul, from the tree, is, well, let's see, I should have written it down. Something to do about let it all go. Let mm -hmm. it all go. And just be, be <laughs> we, I heard we are with you. So isn't that amazing? Okay. Wonderful. There are some wonderful comments coming in as well. Yeah, let's see. I see one from Brigitte. Oh, she's a wonderful person. I had a session with her. She was awesome. Yes. <laughs> Thank says you, Brigitte. The session was amazing and it's highly recommended. <laughs> um, um, she resonates as well. Um, relationships. Um, she also says, I feel like I just understood my purpose. It's to have the journeys and bring the alchemy to my soul's lives. Mm. wow oh yes and i think i saw something about a life in my soul and that's why i heard let it all go because it's not to be carried anymore that was beautiful heidi thank you for your comment heidi says wow so beautiful we'll be doing that again for sure thank mm. you 
Yeah, you can listen to the recording whenever you want. Like I, I even have one a little bit longer on my YouTube channel, but it's the same idea. It's like a, that process, you can go in there. Please don't ever feel you can't go into your landscape. It's just like the only caveat is like, if you're going to go walking around and, and tripping out, it's it's just best to have the tools to deal with what shows up because there's beautiful things there, but there's also things that are like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, like, like, for example, um, what if someone saw something in the river that wasn't too good? How do you um, treat that symbolism? Well, you, you, you directly work with the energies like that. That's the whole light frequencies in there. So the, the, the like rapids. Oh no, but that's not, that's not bad. I mean, like objects, right? Like, ah. so, yeah. So the landscape, the way it works is you've got, it's a natural setting. So it's like a tree, a river, grass. You know, but then all of a sudden, oh, there's a book on, there's a book on the floor. There's a skeleton. There's a key. There's a, a rat. There's a, a crystal ball. And then, no, oh, you put some violet light on it. And it's like, oh, that's a spider. Oh, okay. Right. So you've got these energy tools that are there. Your, your violet light is your truth discerner. You interact with nothing until you've looked at it through violet light. And if there's beings, you don't interact with them until they go through dark blue dark blue energy they have to go through dark blue energy if they don't want to you're not you're nope out not allowed i'm not communicating with you so there's you're going in there to build your boundaries very interesting i love the violet light wow it's awesome. awesome. saint germain right it's like truth now saint germain was he hermes as well i would Someone in our I can't, I can't answer that. It's possible though, because that, that whole question of the alignment with divine will is or alignment Thoth. with truth with a capital T. Or Thoth was Hermes. Somebody in our audience, please share, help us out here. All right. Because I know, yeah. All right. Beautiful. Um, here's Kathleen says, I saw a gold star in my third yeah. eye. Then I saw uh, an altar with cherry blossoms in the middle. Beautiful. And I heard it be peaceful. Awesome. Uh, someone is asking, where do you consider psychic self-defense? If I'm not sure, and maybe the rest of the question is missing, but I'll tell you right now, learning to navigate your landscape and learning how to work with energies that show up there and not just be like, oh, it's crystal ball. No, let me put it back in my heart. Or, oh, there's an angel there. He wants to talk to me. And you actually learn to have boundaries. I'm like, one second. Like, I will talk to you once you've passed my tests. <laughs> you know, walk through the dark blue screen. Yeah, violet light. Walk through the dark blue screen. If that, if you refuse to do that, right off, forget it. If if the being walks through it and they're perfect, they're exactly the same. It's all good because dark blue has this incredible ability to freeze negative energy. Wow. I don't, I don't know how it does it, but it just so you can. If there's something in your landscape that's a bit scary, you just encapsulate it in a sphere of dark blue energy, and it can't get out of there. And then you're kind of like, okay, what's going on with this? A lot of the time, these energies are holding pieces of you. They're holding energies in you. like, mm -hmm. And you want to retrieve these energies back and then take that out of your field. Back to source. You know, let source take care of it. She, she knows what to do. <laughs> Recycle, send it back somewhere, whatever. Like, uh, So just to answer that question, it's the, it's the psychic self-defense comes with understanding what are the energies in you that you're dealing with and getting really good at you know, your spiritual BS meter that's kind of like, that thing looks like an angel, but mm, even before you use the light, you're already starting to know, mm. you know, what's going on. And that's, that's awesome. Cause then you can, that applies to your 3d life. Absolutely. Not yeah. that you can walk around putting violet light on people, which would be cool, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you've developed the ability to. Okay, um, Brigitte says, my message was, use this time to alchemize what you need now. Absolutely. Alchemize what we need. <laughs> alchemize what we need. I'd like you to give us a definition because alchemize, we would think alchemize what you need now, like manifest what you need now, but alchemize what you need now. That means change something now. Can you explain? Bring, bringing it to its highest frequency. Okay. Bringing it to its highest frequency. If you think about core wounds, for example, you know, like behind every core wound, 
is the a deep teaching of truth. You know, behind the core wound of it was abandoned, you know, is the deep teaching of I'm I've always been one with God. Mm-hmm. You know, like this, that's like the, the understanding what it means to, to alchemize things is it's not to like I'm gonna manifest this thing. It's like, no, I'm gonna come back to the truth with a capital T. Right? Like and you know, most wounds really are the things we have done to ourselves. Yes. And like this this weird understanding of like, oh, so I can just decide that's no longer true. Uh-huh. This is powerful. I'm just I'm 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 this is an activation for me right now in our Mercury retrograde as we're in the oh, yeah. <laughs> visiting all of the stuff that needs realignment, maybe. So this is powerful. Thank you, Julie. What a power. There's another question here. It's in the Q and A. Oh, there is a question in the Q and A. This is, this is, if we are committed to doing the work of clearing, how long on average does it take to get through to the shiny black? So remember the shiny black is after we get get through the the shiny black, right? Get through, get, get through to the shiny black. I don't know because like if if you're in the place where you're like okay I'm aware I've got programs and stuff like that you've already started the shiny black right so I, I just want to do the little correction let's just take out the two because okay. you're already in it the minute you're not a biological robot anymore and you're like I'm just gonna work for 35 years and then I'm gonna take my retirement and then something's gonna happen and I'm gonna be happy and then that person gets there and they're like what the hell it, I still feel the same you know like so until you go past that and you're like there's more to this. There's more to this than working 35 years and blah, 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 blah. Then you have already started your shiny black. So you're already, <laughs> you're already. Okay. So everyone listening to shows like this. Exactly. Sort of yeah, yeah. In, at least in their shiny black. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and once again, it's like, once again, like shiny black completed a hundred percent. There's no triggers left. There's no conditionings left. There's no more programs left. That's, that's a, uh, that's huge. You know, like that that's a huge achievement, which creates a calibration of energy that affects like millions of people. So to answer the question, like honestly, it depends on the person. But if you're really committed to the great work of our times, which is that, which is clearing out the clutter, right? Decluttering the soul. Um, and you do it like on a full-time basis, not meaning you can't go work anymore, but you know, you're going in your landscape regularly, you're doing sessions on a regular basis, you're working on your shiny bodies. Five years. Five years is not like it's once again, that's like someone that's like super committed. Mm-hmm. Like I have one of my students we're on, we're going on three and a half years together. And he's the one I was telling you about. Uh that is now he's com- he's more aware of the the realness of the energy world than of this world. He's reconnected to deep, deep teachings of his heritage on other planets he's reconnected to his lyran family he it's like all of this is going on and, and this is now just his daily life even though yes he goes and works you know like he he has a full-time job and he still reads books and he still visits his mom and his dad and <laughs> but all of that is that's what's happening here in this manifestation of myself but i am also connected to everything else that i am I have another student that's super cool. She's re- she's she's starting to tap into her her golden body for sure because she's understood how part of her work here is related to the sound, the freak sound, the frequency sounds of emotions and how to use those to help children with that are considered with learning disabilities actually be able to communicate and be understood and like it's just it gets super trippy. It gets super trippy. The people are like, okay, I get it. My human brain doesn't understand. And I've got these three beings from this other planet that I'm from that are explaining to me how to understand frequencies, even though they don't make sounds that anyone can hear, and how to relay that into the field of another person. <laughs> okay, I know many of us are Doing what I'm doing right now and looking back going, hmm, where are we? And so that tells me where I am in this. 
So one more time for clarity, can you run, oh, sorry. Through, <laughs> can you run through the shiny black, the yeah. shiny white, the shiny red, and then the gold and the teal? Yeah. These are the five alchemical bodies. Five alchemical bodies. Yeah. So you want me to re re recap those because now we can get it again with our because we've been through that process. So it's like, sure, the shiny black is like it really, you know, it's us waking up, seeking out information like this, beginning to do the work, beginning to reach for something more. That's shiny. Yeah, black. It's getting out of reactivity, basically, because like we're reacting to the programs in us, to the conditionings in us, to what our parents told us, to the, our genetic lineage, to the epigenetics from our ancestors, blah, blah, blah. Like all of that, it's all in us. And we are in a reaction to that all the time. That's why they call it kind of biological robot, you know, until you snap out of it enough that you're like, whoa, okay. There's a lot of clutter going on in my field. Yeah. I, still, clutter out. I mean, we I, can still see, I call it, yes, these genes, G-E-N-E-S, make my butt look big. <laughs> That's just a joke. It's a joke, you know, like in high school, uh -huh. make my butt look big. Well, that's what I've been going through as well. And many of us, we're like seeing where we're seeing the programs come up. So that would mm -hmm. be the shiny black phase yeah. to look at things. Yeah. So the shiny black phase is like you becoming more and more aware Oh, that that program has been running in the background all this time. I thought that was me or whatever. And you start bringing consciousness into it. And like yeah. some people can go through their shiny black phase without spiritual work. Some of them go through it through like, for example, contemporary dance like a 30-year career of dancing and moving and coming back and like so it's this isn't like just like you have to do it this spiritual work right like some people complete the shiny black face which is healing the body think about it like that healing the body of all the the noise and the clutter and the this and the that like you can't do this and you can't do this yes so in many ways that corresponds to you know, the, the the body that we're used to thinking about when we think about the seven layers of the subtle field and blah, blah, blah. Like that's that kind of corresponds to your alchemical body. The alchemical soul is when you start, you've cleared enough clutter out that now you are aware of the light that you are and all you want to do is spread it. All you want to do is spread it. You're not doing it for money. You're not doing it for, you just, it's the calling, you know. I, I want people to, to know love. I want people to feel it. I want to share it. I want to share it. I want to give it. Think about a, mo a mother. She wants to give to her children. It's not like, what are you going to give me in return? You know, like there's, there's, it's just unconditional desire to give love and light and take care of life. Like, and then the shiny red phase is, it, it looks a little bit scary from the outside because it's kind of like the place where you just don't give a, you don't give an F anymore. You know, like you, you are in tune with your power. You have no need for any technologies. You know what I mean? Like whether it's like words or mantras or rituals or colors, or, all that's done. You're done. There's no, you're not even working on the landscape anymore. Like the, yeah, the, the shiny white face corresponds to like the shiny black and shiny white face is where you work. You do a lot of landscape work, a lot of landscape work. Like you're clearing, clearing, clearing clutter and clutter and clutter and clutter and then at a certain point you're just kind of like okay i'm there i'm there and it's just like straight down what do i need to do i need to write this book right on just send it in there done do you want to go on shows for interviews no not really why i didn't write it david hawkins in many ways for me corresponds to that the shiny red mm -hmm. the scale of consciousness yeah yeah. yeah 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 he was very much he was he was there just like it, I'm just, it's not david writing the books <laughs> it's just the stream of consciousness that i am and it's like here that i have 40 books man like just there there it is mm -hmm. so shiny black shiny white shiny red shiny black the body shiny white the soul the soul that wants to share the light and the love shiny red pure spirit like think Holy Spirit style, how powerful Holy Spirit is. That. It's just like, boom. The healing is intense with people like that. They can almost just heal you by looking at you. It's a little bit freaky. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're right in there. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. And then golden body and teal body 
it gets really hard to talk about it because there's not a lot of living examples of that. But, you know, at the point of the golden body and the plane of creation, you have fully understood and tapped into why you came here. And we're not even talking as a human being. Like, never mind human being. That's over. You don't think you're a human being anymore. You're in a human vessel. But that's the excuse. And you're here for something really big. I have a couple of key people in mind when I, I think about that, that have devoted, their life is devoted to, you know, working with, you know, whatever, like, creator level beings or ascension guardians or yeah. they have accepted to give their entire life over to that. Mm hmm it's just, and it's not even a choice. <laughs> it's like, well, of course, what do you mean? But there's no choice. You still live in that world of choice. <laughs> it's alignment with divine will. Mm -hmm. Like, and teal body is just, you know, you're kind of like fully ascended. It's a really cool energy to tap into. And teal is one of the most powerful colors you can use in the landscape. Yeah, yeah, it's like a very, very powerful color. It brings things back to their absolute. So most things cease to exist when you put that light on them long enough. Not wow. because you killed them. Right. But just because you brought them back to their absolute. You brought it back to the perfect alignment with divine will. And the, the divine will is light. Truth with a capital T. Anything that isn't made of love and light doesn't exist. Like, was that a good recap of the five phases? Absolutely. Thank you so <laughs> much. It, it, it really I get so excited about it that I'm... <laughs> uh, and you are a Blu-ray uh, anchoring divine will on the planet. We've said that in our last show with you. Um, all right. It really, I can see that world where everyone is on mission in that way. And that mm. should bring inspiration to the hearts of everyone because we're going to make it, we're going to be good. And it really puts responsibility on ourselves. No Sorry. one else is going to do this. No one else is to blame. Nothing mm. outside of us, nothing in the collective that seems really crazy right now. Nothing, nothing can disturb this within us when we do this work, when we work with this landscape like this. So I'm just thinking right now about challenges that we face that actually direct us back into this work. The challenge well, that's, that's the goal of the challenges. That's the goal. That's I'm getting right, right now. That's yeah. the goal. It's like you're gonna you're gonna be out there like, oh out there, out there. Or you're just gonna use that to realize shit, I need to go, I need to go deeper. Deeper in yeah. me. Yeah, deeper. Yeah, yeah. And so it's um it's a really good lesson right here, right now. I feel really activated. I hope our Zoom audience is feeling activated. I hope the beautiful people in our uh, YouTube channel right now watching this are feeling activated. Um, let's see. There's some questions. I'm looking at our, our YouTube comments right now. Yeah, and, go ahead because I don't see them. So let me know. Yeah, here's a question. And welcome to all the beautiful YouTubers. Hi. Um, Valerie, if I have a fear to feel a past lifetime... Will I still be able to see and feel in my landscape? I feel neutral, but I'm grateful for the experience. Whatever, whatever is not resolved from all of the lives you've had, whether on earth or anywhere else, is all accessible, is all in the landscape. There's an area we go that's called the Hera Mountain. And uh, that's a place where there's all, all, the, all the karmic energies that you're still carrying. Right. Some of them are very unconscious. They're, they'll be like kind of like inside the mountain and like weird rooms and other things are a little bit more uh, out in the open. Often the way the landscape will work, if you're very afraid of tapping into something is, is it'll we'll do it super progressively. With like, you know, working with uh, some like maybe light pink energy with a bit of silver powder and kind of calm down a little bit of the fear and the this and then all of a sudden we start unfolding and discovering what's underneath that, what, why it's afraid. There's probably an entity latched into it. We extract the entity. Then once that's done, that's a, then it's a little bit more like, oh my God, now I can see this part of me and it needs to be healed. And then we can help that part. Like, so, you know, it's not like going the landscape and everything you're afraid of is just going to jump at you. It's not like that. It's still your soul. It's still the body of your soul, right? So 
it uh, it's done in a way that's that works with what you're willing to see, but it won't hide things from you either. That's the beauty of it, right? It's your soul. And there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. It's it's really comforting. And and so what a beautiful, again, what a beautiful tool. I know we're all going to be working with this many, 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 many times. It's really powerful. Thank you again for sharing it. Uh, Catherine on our YouTube channel says, pondering all I saw, so many moments converging, bringing to highest frequency, collective clearing of judgment in identity path of NIFJ personality type. I don't know what that is. Free of monadic soul, pure truth, clear. Wow. Okay. Very so cool. That's all, that's all just from tapping into merging with the tree? Well, if so, then keep doing it. Because this is the reality too. Like you merging with your tree is you merging with your soul. And some of us, our soul is just like, I have so many things to tell you. <laughs> Can you just get over here? <laughs> and then you go in there and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> so that's why you go regularly. That's why it's good to connect with your soul on a daily basis. <laughs> and I know. And so, you know what, trees, you, you were turning your microphone because you heard a tree getting cut down. This could explain, well, for me, it explains why I care so much about trees when, when I see them cut. Today, I just saw a tractor digging around a tree below the roots of the tree. And then there's the hub of the tree. And I'm just like, but see, instead of me getting frustrated, I need to go in and heal that right? Instead of me getting mm, frustrated. So this process going into the tree was really, really good and huge. And so what, again, I'll just say again, what a powerful tool, really, really powerful. Uh, I want to share another comment. Right. Catherine adds, pondering took a Gaia landscape crystal to the Sphinx in Giza in 1996. Mm. Cool. Cool. Missy says, I love Julie. <laughs> well, I love this process and the connection to the soul. It makes me wonder, Julie, you've done this so much. You know, you said you've been teaching this for 30 years. Can we stay? Did we get to a point where we can be so merged with our soul? I mean, this is really where we're going. So it, I guess we could call that embodiment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are you feeling that instantaneously you can be there? Like skip that process? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. That's what I, that's what I was saying earlier. Like when you 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 go enough, you just you end up being able to literally interact with the energies in your landscape while you're interacting with the human being and something weird's going on and you can kind of like it just like takes a bit of practice, but with your eyes open and still using your mouth, yes. you can be what's actually going on at the landscape level, the energy in them and what it's trying to plant into your auric field. So that's super interesting because you, then you can just kind of like work on that there, a bit of teal, a bit of whatever, and extract it. And then the behavior of the person changes in the, th right. in the, the 3D world, you know, which is really cool. Or sometimes you work in the landscape and, you know, you go in there and you get activations. Like when you go to the temple of your present incarnation, there's a, a guy there and has things he can give you, you know, that, activate energy in you and and uh once it was like a some, some sort of necklace with a sun you know like a and the sun just kind of merged with the the thymus gland and then i went to work this is like you know 28 years ago and uh, i was working in an art gallery and this kid walked in with his family and he was like you know like he, he saw he it. could see like he could see the energy right so it's like it's visible to those who know how i look like or to a kid that it's just for three seconds he saw it and then he was like back there just buzzing like a little kid and you know but but yes the idea is for you to be in real time in your landscape all the time just remember that student that place is more real than here that's that's your multi-dimensional self in there that is the multi-dimensional right? self absolutely that is the best definition this whole talk is is us becoming aware of our multidimensionality and merging mm. with our soul and right now i feel all of ourselves in that tree and we are just this big bushy tree we're all just brilliant beautiful trees 
Wow. Okay. So you mentioned some things like other things in the landscape, other places we can go. I know people want to work deeper with you, take a deeper dive in this. And so in the chat, I've put your special offer, a link to it. And right here on this webpage that got everybody to this program is the de the description of what your workshop is. This is three hours with you where yeah. we get to go and do more of this work. Oh my goodness. Tell us about this. Yeah. So the three hour workshop is actually going through the multi-dimensional harmonization method, right? So the align the body mind connection is absolutely essential. We've got to get the mind and the body as one unit instead of the mind dissociated from the body. And once we've got that and the heart opens from there, we're going to go into the landscape and we're going to go into the landscape to, well, not only solidify your link to your soul, but we're going to go to a couple of specific places in the landscape that are super high charged, receive activations and downloads and healings. And, you know, like I, 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 we can't go into spaces that require like a high level of interaction and one-on-one -on -one work with what's going on. But there are places in the landscape that are just about supercharging your connection, you know, with the universe and with your soul and, you know, with your life force, with crystals, with, so there's like about five awesome cool areas that we're going to go into. So it's going to be about an hour and almost 90 minute long journey into the, into the soul landscape with um, about an hour before that to just get all get all the chakras aligned properly so that we can you know we can go ahead into the soul landscape and really have an expansive experience at the same time it teaches the base of that multi-dimensional harmonization method so do come into the workshop with something you want to work on you know like whatever like um but i don't know i'm pissed off at my husband we always, we, we always have the same fight or this keeps happening, or I have this deep sadness about it, whatever, whatever it is, come with a theme in mind, because we will clear that out of your field before we go into the landscape. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. And I think the other thing we're talking about, too, is the Ascension Particle Activation uh, course, right? There's a bundle that people can buy. Beautiful, yes. Yeah, so the Activating Ascension Particles is very powerful work to start the work of your alchemical bodies right because what we're doing is we're opening up the it's a series of it's about 20 hours of guided meditations and activations wow. and it's a series of teachings in order to open the nine physical doors doorways through which you absorb the ascension particles so like the solar particles the the prana the adamantine particles from lemuria the celestial and terrestrial crystal particles. Some of them are from Atlantis. Some of them are from deep out there. Orion particles, six dimension particles. So by opening up these, it's a bunch of activations and meditations through which we open up these nine physical doorways and open up the energetic doorways as well and really practice absorbing and bringing in, bringing in these uh, particles that also work on, on our glands you know, thyroid, thymus, pineal, and help to develop uh, chakras that are located in the emotional and mental bodies that it, someone was asking earlier, like how, how fast can, can we do work if we commit to it? So by doing ascension particle work, you can speed up the process of your physical body mutating into 5D structures you can pretty much do it in five years instead of doing it half the time and it takes 20. Like, so once again, it's this, it's the same idea. The your willingness to put in the work, right? And your willingness to open up the gateways and open up the doorways and receive the activations and do the work. That's what determines how fast your body's going to be able to shift and mutate through this transition. Because like everything's changing. Our organs, our glands, everything is changing. Like we're not going to be able to be the way we are now and function in 5D. That's obvious. We can't have fear brains hijacked all the time. <laughs> we can't have cortisol like pumping through our adrenals. And uh, that's what some of these essential, par essential particles are doing is they're re <clears throat> recalibrating and basically uh, rewriting some of the 
this is the genetic information so that, for example, your adrenals don't kick in cortisol right away if you see something you've never seen before. Because it's like, what, what's going to happen when you start seeing beings from a whole bunch of other dimensions? If we're the way we are right now with shiny black bodies that are all compressed and full of programs and fears, we're just going to freak. <laughs> so even though it's not directly touching on soul alchemy, the ascension particle activation is an incredible way to get the bodies ready for expanding. Yeah. And I, it, I love that. It's so fun. People love that program. Absolutely. Yeah. I, again for it it really is powerful work powerful teachings we again there's so many kudos coming in for you julie people have had sessions with you they say it's the great they say the work that you've done is so activating and supportive so thank you for living your life mission and being in your your purpose there i want to direct everyone to check out those programs you have a bundle. There's You can get just the Ascension Particles or you can get just the workshop, no matter where you are, or you can get all three. And we want to make this easy for you. So there's a two payment plan. If that helps in any way, there is that two payment plan. So check it out and put your heart in it. And if this feels supportive to you, then you will know that and you can work with Julie more deeply. And that, well, that workshop is uh, is live, but then then the recording would be available if someone wants to buy it after, right? So the the live workshop is on April twentieth. It's on a Saturday, so anyone anyone working a nine to five job Monday to Friday, you can still come because we made sure it was on a weekend. What a beautiful experience as well! I know people are excited about that. I'm excited about it. Thank you for that, and um, just everyone check it out. Yes, we can't wait says Brigitte. And all right, oh, I just goodness. wanted to share a beautiful moment of synchronicity as well. So Julie is kind of a world traveler. Oh. <laughs> and this week, oh my God, it was synchronicity, wasn't it? It was absolute magic. <laughs> I was, I had to run to a store and I'm here in this little town. And uh, there's this beautiful woman smiling at me and it's Julie. <laughs> And I was like, Julie, we met. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was magic, the synchronicity. That's angels or that's our higher selves aligning us to that. Isn't that wonderful? That's really cool. So so awesome. I to share that because it was really cool. I loved it. So cool. And it set us up for the energy in today's call. We hope oh, everyone wow. is flying high from this. And we encourage you to use this soul journey to go into your inner landscape in this way. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. You know, we've probably been doing this in our healing work, but to have the definition of what it is, is so much easier to navigate. So it's really beautiful. Again, I want to say kudos to you. And I want to th say thanks to everyone who did this practice because you mm -hmm. are a new earth leader and we got this. We do have this. We can't take our baggage to 5D, but we can inflate and inflate and inflate our soul and embody our soul and be there in that 5D experience and beyond. So Julie, as we say goodbye, I want to give you a moment for final thoughts and reflections. Well, the great work of our times is, is what this is. You know, the the alchemy work is what this is. We've got the tools of love and forgiveness given to us by, you know, the Christ consciousness. We've got the tools of detachment and compassion given given to us by the Buddhist, Buddhist traditions. And now we are coming back. You know, the first tradition was the alchemy one with the alignment with divine will. And we're coming back to it with these two other tools as well. So detachment and compassion towards our patterns, love and forgiveness towards everything that's wounded us mm -hmm. so that we can finally just ha really, really calibrate that alignment with divine will and just really understanding what we are, not who, what, and what we're here to do. We are here to embody the immensity of the light. That's it. That's what we're here to do. And for that to happen, for that immensity of the light to be embodied through you, 
into the earth, it needs a clear vessel. So this decluttering work, in many ways, not only is the most awesome thing you can ever do for yourself, but it is also the most awesome thing you could ever do for the collective. So win-win. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We already are feeling so sparkly and clear from this activation. It was an activation, this process, mm -hmm. this decluttering of our soul or this connecting with our soul and bringing in more light is so beautiful and so wonderful. And I know, as you said, we're going to have to keep going in and keep practicing with it, but it feels so good. And I see that world where we're all there. We are mm -hmm. all there. Thank yeah. you, Julie Claire. This has been so beautiful. We are sparkly. You left us all in a beautiful place in a beautiful <laughs> vibration. Thank you. Thank you all for listening as well. We love you and we thank you for being with us. Thanks, everyone. Namaste. Bye. Bye. This has been a presentation of New Earth One Network, your home for New Earth Living. Access information, education, and videos on living from the heart in unity consciousness. Visit NewEarthOne.com.